Today we're going to talk about multiplying integers. It's the first part of standard 7SN2 that says you're going to apply what you already know about multiplication to multiply integers. So today, by the end of this video, I'm hoping you'll have a better understanding of how to multiply integers. Multiplying is the same as grouping. See, you already knew that. So in this case right here, we have a picture of two groups of three. Two groups of three we know is six. Another way to look at it is we have three things taken two times. So three times two is six. Now you already knew that. But now what happens over here when I have negative two four times? Negative two four times is not positive eight, but it's negative eight. And this is pretty straightforward because we can count them. We just can see that there are eight negatives here. Another way to look at it is I have four groups of negative two. Four groups of negative two is negative eight. Okay, now what happens though if the signs aren't always exactly the same? That's what we're going to find out next. Multiplying is also repeated addition. You already know this. This is review. The only thing though is we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to add some negatives. So if I have 5 times 2 over here, that means I have 5 groups of 2. 5 groups of 2 is 10. Another way to look at it is I could have two groups of 5. And two groups of 5, whoops, I thought I put my pen on. I did. Two groups of 5 could be 1, 2. Now we know from the commutative property that 5 times 2 is the same as 2 times 5. So let's do this one more way. I could also say that this is five groups of two. So here is one group of two, two, three, four, five. I still end up at positive 10. Okay, easy enough so far. Over here, it says five times negative two. That means I have five groups of negative two. So I'll start here and count five groups of negative two. Remember, negative means I move to the left. One set, two sets, three sets, four sets, five sets. I landed on negative 10. Another way to look at it, because of the commutative property, it says I can do it in any order, I could look at this as negative 2 times 5, which means negative 2 taken 5 times, or negative 2 groups of 5. Still brings us to negative 10. Down here I have negative 5 times 2. This means basically what we just did in the last one, two groups of negative five. I still end up at negative 10. Another way to look at it with the commutative property is two times negative five. So I could do, let me change my colored pen. negative five sets of two. One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, it's not perfect. It's still going to be, oops, I forgot my negative, didn't I? It's a negative 10. Somehow I forgot that negative in there. Sorry about that. Okay, the next one says negative five times negative two. So this part gets a little bit tricky. Because I have negative five and I have negative two, because they're both the same, I'm really looking at it as five groups of two. 
because negative five groups of negative two cancel each other out. So now I have one, two, three, four, whoops, five. Sorry about those inaccurate jumps. I end up at positive 10. Same thing here, if I have negative two times negative five, it's negative two groups of negative five. The two negatives really kind of cancel each other out and make it positive. So this is also, oops, positive 10. And I can show you on the number line. Basically means I have one, two groups of five, positive 10. Take a second and tell me what you notice between these. What I'm really asking you to look at is when do I end up with a positive? When do I end up with a negative? Take a second here and write something down. I hope you pause the video. What I wrote in the what you notice, what do you notice is that when we had the same signs, our product was positive. When we had signs that were different, our product was negative. Up here, the first and the last problem were positive tens. The second and the third problem were negative 10. And you'll, you'll notice it's because the negative five and the two had different signs. And the five and the negative two had different signs. So, Multiplica multiplica multiplicative identity property means when I multiply by a positive one, I always get the same value. It doesn't matter what it is. So let's try a few of these. If I have one times three, we already know that that's three. If I have negative three times one, it's negative three. If I have one times negative three, remember what we just said. The multiplicative identity property says that whatever I multiply by one gives me the same value. So one times negative three is negative three. Negative three times negative one, uh-oh, that's something different. Remember what we said, when both of the values are negatives, they kind of cancel each other out. And so negative three times negative one is actually a positive three. Take a minute, pause the video, and think about what we've just talked about. I hope you pause the video. It says in this bottom circle, what are all of the ways that we can write multiplication? And I want you to remember really what it's asking us to find is all of the symbols that we can use for multiplication. One of the things we can use is the dot. Do you remember that? Another thing we can use is the X sign for multiplication. Now we are using that in this unit, but when we get into algebra in solving equations, we will no longer use the X because that could get confusing. And then we can always use parentheses. Multiplying by an opposite gives you the opposite answer. Keep that in mind. When we multiply by an opposite, it gives us the opposite answer. So if I'm multiplying a positive by a negative, I end up with a negative. If I'm multiplying a negative times a negative, I end up with a positive because it gives us the opposite. I hope that makes sense. When we multiply by an opposite, it gives us an opposite answer. Keep these doodle notes in case you need to look back. Keep them somewhere safe.